Welsh physicist Rhys Taylor was asked, uh, on what's, could you pee around the moon? And he calculated that pee comes out <laughs> at about a meter a second and that's not escape velocity for our moon. So he worked backwards from that and he figured that if you were on an asteroid about two kilometers across and you, uh, you peed, <laughs> it would go all the way around the asteroid and then it would, you'd be peeing on yourself. What do you look up? Welcome to another edition of Because Science Footnotes, the show where we take a look back on all the nerdy things we got up to on this channel, and I select some of your comments, questions, and corrections for, th for further study, <laughs> in the hopes that we can all get a little bit, little bit less dumb. Man, I could really use some jump cuts around there. <laughs> so on the last episode of Because Science, we looked into how Thor, <laughs> how Thor might forge his new hammer in Avengers Infinity War. Light spoilers, it's been three weeks at this point. Uh, he forges a new ax called Stormbreaker in Infinity War, and I said that based on the fact that Thor calls it a neutron star, where, he's, where the forge harnesses all of its energy from, and assuming the size of the aperture where all the energy goes through around the neutron star, and assuming the amount of time that the dwarven forge each re mentions, we got an incredibly large energy value, more energy, it takes more energy to melt down Uru, the mystical metal, than all of humanity uses in six months on the planet Earth. So incredibly much, a lot. But what did you have to say about all that that I just said? As usual, Matterbeam getting in early with a little bit of additional context for you. If you want to go to the YouTube page, youtube.com slash because science and see a little bit more nerdery, you can check that out. He, she, they explains how you could use a neutron star as an energy source, even though it's not undergoing nuclear fusion anymore in its core, it is a dead star, but you could throw material at it, and because the material would hit the surface because of the neutron star's incredible surface gravity at such a high velocity, it would destroy itself energetically and you could harness energy from that. It's very cool, check it out. Our first comment comes from Nicolas Herturdo Castro who says, if the metal is so dense, wouldn't, extreme, wouldn't it extremely rapidly expand as its pressure is so much greater than a vacuum and the atmosphere of Earth? Like when you squeeze a potato chip bag, but then it unsqueezes by its own. I don't know what you're talking about with the potato chips thing, but, uh, yes, you are right, only in a specific circumstance. So while the new axe Stormbreaker looks to be made out of Uru, the same metal that Mjolnir is made out of, I don't think it's enchanted with the same make itself heavier magic or whatever that is. Um, at least in Infinity War, you don't see it make itself heavier like someone cannot lift it up or something like that. Mjolnir, if it can make itself heavier, it would make itself, give itself effectively more mass, it can make itself more dense, or if it was made out of neutron star material, I don't think it is, but if it were, then yes, you are right. Neutron star material, if you took a chunk of neutron star material, <laughs> yes, if you took a chunk of neutron star material, with this volume and you removed it from the neutron star, you no longer have the pressures surrounding that material that keep it in this shape. So remove it from the neutron star environment and bring it to something like Earth, this would expand out rapidly, explosively and violently. It would probably wipe out the city that I am currently sitting in, if not more so, just with this hammer. But Stormbreaker, I don't think has the same density problem. Otherwise, you are correct. Our next comment comes from Aaron Bagel, who says, I guess the follow-up question would be, what kind of biomatter is Groot composed of if his roots, vines, or stems are latching onto the freshly forged, ridiculously hot Uru metal, and so uh, that matter does not ignite instantly? Great point. Not only that, Stormbreaker uses storm powers. Lightning is flowing through it and from it constantly at the end of Infinity War. And 
Lightning is incredibly hot. It carries gigajoules of energy with it, and it's hotter than the surface of the sun. And when lightning goes through something like wood, which has a moisture content, and moisture content, like water, expands thousands, like a thousand times in volume when it goes from a liquid to a gas, then this happens. Yeah, that's just a telephone pole. Imagine what would happen to Groot. It's almost worse than turn into dust. Our next comment comes from frequent commenter Hazemina, nailed it, who says, uh, and then Thor would get cancer and we all live sadly ever after. <laughs> Pointing out that the amount of radiation being spit out of the neutron star should be more than enough to, to rearrange the molecular structure of anything into anything else. Um, I don't know about that, because I'm not that smart, but uh, neutron stars put out the majority of their radiation, um, not in the form of visible light, but in the form of x-rays, high energy photons, like x-rays. And if you were standing right in the path of this kind of x-ray power, yeah, it'd be like getting chest x-rayed to death within moments, seconds, probably. But it's Thor. If he can withstand that, what else? He, just imagine what he could withstand. But we'll get to that in a second. Next comment comes from 13 Curie Master, who says, so I kind of want to show up in footnotes, but I can't think of anything nerdy enough for it. <laughs> I blame the fact that I have a final in a few hours. How did it go? Post your score! If you got anything less than an A-, minus, you're still doing fine. Keep it up. And do better. <laughs> Our next comment comes from Tamil Savan D. <laughs> who, who says, so basic, I'm only reading this because of the misspelling. So basically the dwarf, Eitri, built a Dyson Sphere around a neutron star. It's a Dyson Sphere. You're missing, you're missing the H and you put an A in there. But imagine a Dyson Spear. Imagine a spear the size that it could be, it, that it's larger than a star. And if you threw a Dyson Spear at a planet powered by a star, you can probably obliterate all life on that planet. Dyson Spear. Oh no. Oh shh. Oh no. Ah, no problem at all. Our next comments come from Kenneth Cates and Jack Shepard, who say, so Thor can withstand a lightsaber hit, and so Thor can withstand a shot from the Death Star. Yes and no. Based on the values that we calculated based on our own assumptions, Thor could take a direct hit from a lightsaber and be fine. If he can take the radiative energy flux from a neutron star across one entire half of his body for minutes, he is handling more energy, more power, energy per second, than this puts out, based on what I've calculated them to put out. A few megawatts, 35 million watts maybe. What I'm considering and what a neutron star's luminosity is putting out over the area that we are assuming is many thousands of times more than that. So Thor could be hit by a lightsaber and be fine. How awesome would that be? Whereas the crossover is like, who are you, who are you metal man? And it's like, it's like, I find your lack of faith disturbing. And he, he hits him, he hits him and he goes, he's like, do you know? And then he punches him like right in the, oh. <laughs> Writing my fanfic right now. But Thor would be obliterated by a Death Star's laser. If you consider the, the energy content of a Death Star laser to be the gravitational binding energy of an Earth-sized planet, it's around 2 times 10 to the 32 joules, the energy value. Whereas we, are calcul we calculated for the neutron star energy that is being put into the Uru as 10 to the 20 joules, which means that a Death Star laser is still a trillion times uh, more energetic. 
And considering how Thor was pretty badly burnt up and fried in Infinity War by his feet, I don't know if he could handle something that's a trillion times worse. So, lightsaber, yes. Death Star, no. Fanfic, write it. But our super nerd comment of the week, I'm giving to Poppletron, who's writing for his friend Josh, apparently. And he says, a lot. But he's going step by step through what you would need to make the Dwarven Forge itself, those rings in Infinity War, out of to withstand the intense gravitational forces that a neutron star has. Now, I can't go through all of this myself, um, because I have only so much time in the day, but it's an incredibly nerdy analysis that looks like it's on the right track, um, no matter what the numbers are. It says, that concludes all of my thoughts. Footnotes, pretty please, Thor Senpai? <laughs> Consider yourself noticed. Ding! Oh, wait. Wow! <laughs> but I'm not always right. I recently uh, got wrong how voluminous a milliliter was and I felt really bad about it. I take stuff like that pretty hard. So what did I get wrong last week? Our first correction comes from a bunch of people who all say, you did it again, Kyle, dang it, right-handed Infinity Gauntlet, which we all know is a fake Infinity Gauntlet if it goes on your right hand. You're right, I did have my gauntlet, my Infinity Gauntlet on the wrong hand because I need a free hand to do this. Oh. Half of you are gone. <laughs> Feels so much better. Our next correction comes from Daniel Selzer, who took issue with when I said that a neutron star, when it forms, it forms because the star gains mass and then it collapses, it collapses down in on itself because of that mass, blah, 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 blah. I see the confusion here. I said that the star gains mass, but what I meant, and what I think I said, is that the star's core starts to gain mass, relatively speaking, to the rest of the star. And when the core of the star starts accumulating heavy elements like iron, it will get to a certain amount of mass for a certain kind of star that it passes the limit at which the electron degeneracy pressure keeping it from falling in on itself, the electrons not being able to occupy the same states, is no longer able to fight against the gravitation that is pulling down to the center of mass of the star. At that point, the electrons and protons come together and form neutrons, and then a neutron star is formed, and the shock wave from that creation flings off a supernova. But that's only for a certain kind of star, and there's a lot, the universe is a big place. There's a lot of different conditions where something like that can happen. But I see the confusion, good correction. The one thing you forgot is that, do you know, what, you know, it makes you sound really nerdy. Just take a take a big uh, swallow of breath in the middle of a sentence. Just be like, well, the thing that you forgot is <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, if you're wearing actually a gauntlet, isn't really con <laughs> considered a gauntlet unless. <laughs> Our next comment comes from a couple of people who say, the hammer containing the power of Thor, sorry for nitpicking, but clearly you haven't seen Thor Ragnarok. The hammer is just an instrument of Thor's power. It's not the source of his power. That's Thor himself. It says right on the, right on Mjolnir. Who, I mean, I'm... If, if you be worthy, who shall ever have it will have, I'm sorry, it's the original translation. If, if you worthy, then if you have this in your hand, wow, it's so much wordier than it is in the movies. If you have this in your hand and you're really cool, then he show whoever she will have, wow, these runes, <laughs> these runes are complicated. Then he or she or they will have the power of Thor. Doesn't say anything about the power of Thor being inside you all along. <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, yes, there's discrepancies between the movie and the comics and what, you know, lore, actual lore says. Um, so I'll take minus half a point for not showing all my work. Our next correction comes from another gaggle of people. Uh, they say, that uh, does the amount of energy, they all say some version of, does the amount of energy blocked by Thor's body have any noticeable effect on the total amount of energy being sent to the forge, or are the numbers so absurdly large that it is negligible? 
great correction. You're absolutely right. When we calculated how much energy would be coming from the aperture that goes to the neutron star, if Thor is standing right in the middle of it, some of that surface area is going to be blocked by Thor's body, and it's absorbing that energy. However, because of how wide I assumed the aperture to be in relation to how tall Chris Hemsworth is, it's actually only a few percent difference, under 5%. So yes, you are absolutely right. Good correction. There is a small percentage difference, but the numbers that we are talking about are so incredibly large, it doesn't really matter. It's like the difference between 230 million trillion and 240 million trillion. Still a million trillion. <laughs> all right, you weapons nerds. You always come out of the woodwork. <laughs> but actually, if you had a more uh, leather-based gauntlet, perhaps with uh, metal fingers, then you could probably... The best correction this week, I'm giving to a multiple group. If you see your name, congratulations. <laughs> There may be more um, who all say the using the term forge at all in this situation is incorrect. It would make more sense to call it a foundry because no actual forging occurred. It is casting. I'm just saying seeing seeing Peter Dinkelberg <laughs> <laughs> use giant power hammer would be badass. It's Dinklage, dude. <laughs> you know, you don't get to be a super nerd anymore, <laughs> Dinkelberg. <laughs> but what other commenters get, get at is um, it's, not, it's not forging. Forging is when you are taking a weapon and shaping it while that weapon is in its solid form. It's usually heated, but you're using like a power hammer or something else in a foundry to shape something that's already solid into a weapon. Casting is pouring some liquid metal into a mold and then letting it cool into the form that you want. And that is what is in Infinity War. So in Infinity War, there is nothing forged. It is a casted axe, and it's not forged at all. It's a very nerdy semantical argument, but you are all technically right. And for that, you are all, except for Stephen Price, <laughs> super nerds. <laughs> Dinkelberg. That's a funny name. Now, if you already subscribe to Alpha at projectalpha.com, you already know what the next episode of Because Science is going to be because you have already seen it two days earlier than anyone else. Lucky you, premium content. But if you haven't subscribed to Alpha just yet, the next episode of Because Science is going to be how to slice bullets like Deadpool. <laughs> That's right, in next week's episode, I'm evaluating one of Movie Deadpool's signature moves, slicing a bullet in half with a katana. Can you slice a bullet in half in midair? How fast and how superhumanly reflexful, <laughs> reflexive, would you have to be in order to do so if you can? And if all of that is possible, would it even be a good idea to slice a bullet in half that is coming at you? So go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet about forging, nope, about casting Thor's Stormbreaker axe and leave your comments, questions, and corrections everywhere at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, and at because science on Twitter and Instagram. That's where I am going to pull the comments, questions, and corrections for, from, for this show. <laughs> it's been a long day. And make sure to get in there early because I can only look at so many comments. I read through about a thousand before I film this show. So get in quick and make it super nerdy. And don't forget. Uh, I don't feel so good. Uh